We spend a third of our lives asleep, but for a process that seems so essential to our well-being and takes up so much of our time, it remains relatively mysterious. What happens during the seven or eight hours a night we spend with our eyes shut, unconscious to most external stimuli? Only in the last century have neuroscientists begun to uncover the mechanisms of sleep. This video should help shed some light on the knowledge that we do have about sleep. In the 1950s, a method of measuring electrical activity in the brain called electroencephalography, or EEG, was used for the first time to understand what happens in the brain during sleep. These experiments revealed distinct stages of sleep marked by different types of waves produced by the patterns of depolarization in the brain over time. There are two main stages of sleep, rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, and non-rapid eye movement, or NREM sleep. Non-rapid eye movement can be further divided into three stages. The first stage of NREM sleep is the stage between wakefulness and sleep. It is characterized by theta waves, which have frequencies of 4 to 8 hertz. During this stage of sleep, some people experience hypnagogic hallucinations, seeing and hearing things that aren't there while falling asleep. Another common phenomenon during this stage of sleep is called hypnic jerks which are basically when you feel like you're falling or that your bed is turning and then feel a sudden jolt. The second stage of NREM sleep has more theta waves and is considered a deeper stage of sleep. It also contains sleep spindles and K complexes. A sleep spindle is a rapid rhythmic brain activity that may inhibit cognitive processes to help you stay asleep if there is a sudden or loud noise. K-complexes are thought to be responsible for memory consolidation during sleep. Like sleep spindles, they also suppress cortical arousal, but in response to more specific stimuli. For instance, if someone poked you while you were asleep during this second stage, you would probably produce a K-complex which would suppress the processing of the stimuli and help you stay asleep. The third stage of NREM sleep is the deepest stage of sleep. It is called slow wave sleep because it is characterized by an EEG showing delta waves, which are much slower with frequencies of 0.5 to 2 hertz. During this stage of sleep, it is very difficult to wake up. And if you've ever walked in your sleep, it occurs during this stage of sleep. Finally, there is the rapid eye movement stage of sleep. It is called rapid eye movement sleep because during this stage, your eyes move around rapidly beneath your eyelids. An EEG reading from REM sleep looks very similar to what an EEG reading would look like when you are awake with your eyes shut since external input is suppressed. It shows beta waves, which have a much higher frequency than either theta or delta waves at 12.5 to 30 hertz. It is during REM sleep that most of our dreams take place. Although your brain is very active during REM sleep, your body is paralyzed, which is what prevents you from acting out your dreams. REM sleep is called paradoxical sleep for this re reason. While your brain is very awake, your body is completely paralyzed. You cycle through these stages starting with NREM1, going into NREM2, followed by NREM3, and then going back to NREM2 before entering REM sleep. After REM sleep, you return to the first stage. Each cycle lasts about 90 minutes, meaning that during eight hours of sleep, you go through this cycle roughly five times. This cycle isn't static, however. Throughout the night, the amount of time within the cycle spent in the REM stage increases. Even though it may seem effortless, it takes a lot of coordination for your brain to help you fall asleep and stay asleep.